Hello everybody, it's me Jones OMJ here. Chicago is the third largest city in the United States by population, and has the second largest skyline in the United States behind New York City. Chicago has commonly been referred to as the architecture capital of the world due to it being the birthplace of modern architecture and skyscrapers, and is home to most famous architectural corporations, including the one that designed the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world. In addition to being well known for its architecture, Chicago is also a major transportation hub. It started out as a railroad hub during the industrial age in the US to link railroads from the east coast to the west coast. And when the jet age came, Chicago became a major aviation hub in the world. Chicago's main airport, O'Hare International Airport, was once the busiest airport in the world, but recently it has fallen behind. Older or dingy facilities have not given passengers a warm welcome to the city, and capacity has maxed out, with airlines wanting to expand here but having no way to do so due to the limited gate space, which has stalled growth at the airport. To combat these problems, O'Hare must go through a major redevelopment plan, and that is exactly what O'Hare 21 promises to do. This is Chicago's $8.5 billion mega airport project. Before we begin, make sure you are subscribed with the notification bell on so you can stay up to date on the latest architectural projects and statistics. Chicago O'Hare International Airport's history goes back, like way back to the 1940s towards the end of World War II. The U.S. Army Air Force opened a base in the Chicago area, which was used as an active fighter base. It was home to the 62nd Fighter Interceptor Squadron flying North American F-86 Sabres from 1950 to 1959. In the 1960s, as the war had long ended ago, the need for O'Hare as an active duty fighter base diminished, just as commercial interest in the airport had continued to arise. The airport, by the way, was named O'Hare after Edward Butch O'Hare, the U.S. Navy's first flying ace and Medal of Honor recipient in World War II. Scheduled passenger service began in 1955, but growth was slow at first due to Chicago's other airport, Midway. Since O'Hare was built further away from downtown, many airlines were reluctant to relocate to O'Hare since there wasn't easy highway access to the airport. However, once the jet age began in the 1960s, airlines were interested to relocate to O'Hare since it was much bigger and better designed for the bigger jetliners. The first scheduled jet at O'Hare was an American Airlines Boeing 707 from New York City to Chicago to San Francisco. The design of O'Hare's terminals used a sort of split finger design, with V-shaped concourses connected to terminals. As growth at O'Hare accelerated, many airlines created hubs at O'Hare, including United, American, Delta, TWA, and more. But after U.S. airline deregulation was passed, the famous competition between airlines at O'Hare combined with United and American's dominance at the airport caused TWA to move its Midwestern hub to St. Louis in the 1980s, and Delta moved its Midwestern hub from Chicago to Cincinnati in 1990. These airlines still had a presence at O'Hare, just not as big as United and American's presence. Over time, some renovations and upgrades had taken place at the airport. Terminal 1, which currently houses United Airlines today at O'Hare, was reconstructed in the 1980s and features a satellite concourse design. In addition, O'Hare also had to build a new international terminal in the 90s since the original Terminal 4 at O'Hare was tiny and required passengers to take a bus to their gate, which was really inefficient. Terminal 5, O'Hare's current international terminal opened in 1993, and in 2016, one of the gates at Terminal 5 was upgraded to support the Airbus A380, the largest commercial aircraft. Today, O'Hare has grown into one of the largest airports in the U.S. and world, taking up 30.86 square kilometers. It also became famous as the first world's busiest airport of the jet age, holding that distinction from 1963 to 1998. Today, it is the world's sixth busiest airport and the third busiest airport in the U.S., servicing a whopping 83 million annual passengers. O'Hare is still the busiest airport in the world though in terms of aircraft operations, with 2,520 taking place every day. But as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, O'Hare has some problems that can really hurt the passenger experience.
Like with most old US airports, O'Hare was state of the art for its time, but as things have changed over time, it has started to become dated and accumulated some problems over time. The first major problem has to do with the layout of the runways. When O'Hare first opened, it had several runways, all angled which were meant to allow takeoffs into the wind. This actually gave O'Hare the most runways of any airport in the US, at 8 runways. However, there were some problems with this approach. The various intersecting runways were both dangerous and efficient as commercial traffic at O'Hare increased. This ultimately led to O'Hare becoming one of the worst US airports for flight delays. Thankfully, there was an ongoing project to reorient the runways to make them a lot more efficient. And just like most other older US airports, O'Hare's facilities have started to look very dated, especially when compared to other newer airports in East Asia and the Middle East. And for the cherry on top, despite O'Hare being one of the biggest airports in the US and world, the older terminals are still not able to keep up with the insane amount of people passing through the airport each year. O'Hare needs to completely redevelop its terminals if it wants to keep up with the growing needs of passengers. To combat these problems, Chicago not only wants to completely redevelop the entire airport, they want to transform O'Hare from one of the worst airports to one of the best airports in the world. Here is an overview of the $8.5 billion master plan. It includes reorienting the runways, expanding O'Hare's people mover to the rental car center, completely renovating terminals 1 and 3, expanding terminal 5 and renovating it, and at the ultimate center of the project, an all new global terminal with two satellite concourses to replace Terminal 2. First, let's talk about the smaller things, and then we'll work up to the bigger things. The runway reorientation has been ongoing since 2016, and is expected to complete sometime this year or next year. In addition, O'Hare's ATS People Mover was in desperate need of an upgrade. The new system will include brand new cars that will work more reliably in different weather conditions, and it will now be expanded to connect to O'Hare's rental car facility, so passengers will not have to take buses there anymore. Next up, some big improvements are coming to Terminal 5, O'Hare's current international terminal. The project here includes an additional 10 gates, completely renovating the inside of the terminal, new lounges, shops, and restaurants, and in later phases, a new hotel and parking garage. Terminal 5 also currently only has one Airbus A380 gate, but this expansion will add a second A380 gate to Terminal 5, in addition to the many A380 gates that will be added in the global terminal. The renovation will also allow Terminal 5 to service both domestic and international flights. The renovation for Terminal 5 broke ground in early 2019 and will complete in late 2021. Once complete, Delta Airlines will move all of its operations to Terminal 5 so it can operate in the same terminal as its SkyTeam Alliance partners. And finally, the heart of this huge redevelopment is the all-new global terminal that will replace Terminal 2. The city of Chicago wants this terminal to be an insane upgrade that can rival the amazing airport terminals in East Asia and the Middle East. A competition was held among some famed architects, and the citizens of Chicago could vote for their favorite. Here is a quick montage of the five designs for the global terminal. Be sure to let me know your favorite down in the comments. Out of these five designs, the one that won with the most votes was Studio ORD. I personally like the design of this one, especially with the wood accents on the inside. Studio ORD's global terminal is expected to break ground in 2022 and be completed in 2028. The global terminal will feature the main terminal with two satellite concourses connected to it underground. The global terminal and its satellite concourses will add a lot of new gates to O'Hare, with support for both narrow-body and wide-body aircraft. The global terminal will also add some more Airbus A380 capable gates to O'Hare. 
the Global Terminal will house American Airlines, United Airlines, and the Alliance Partners at One World and Star Alliance, in addition to plenty of other international carriers. The Global Terminal will enable seamless connectivity between international and domestic flights, and it will be one of the first airports in the world to do so. New lounges, shops, and restaurants will of course be built in the new terminal, and everything from the design to the experience passengers will have will dramatically increase their impressions of O'Hare and Chicago over the previous terminals. Overall, I'm very excited to see the completion of this global terminal as I think it is one of the best looking terminals not only in the US but also in the world. Overall, in my opinion, this is one of the most exciting mega projects in the US and world. Chicago is my favorite city that I've been to, so I'm happy to see that it will be transforming its airport into a world class mega airport. I personally am a huge fan of the design of the new global terminal, and I think these improvements will dramatically improve people's experience at O'Hare. Be sure to let me know what you think of the new O'Hare down in the comments. Do you like it or dislike it, and why? Thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.